Welcome to Banks Unboxing, where every day is Christmas. Today, $400 fill filters, and I've got four of them. Welcome back to Banks Unboxing. We've got several engine dynos here at Banks, and I'm going completely through all the fuel systems from scratch. And now we're to the point where we need to address fuel filters. So we made a call to our friends at Parker Raycor, and we've got four of these gems. So let's take a look. This is a large fuel filter. Oh, baby. So what have we got here? Let me read it to you. It's an S3207T, and this is a 10 micron filter assembly, which I will unbag here. What do you mean I don't need my knife? <laughs> I get to use the Milwaukee. Ah, here we go. Beautiful equipment, I might add. Look at the overall length of this thing. I think this is, this is like a foot and a half here. Fuel filter and water separator is what we're doing here. You've heard about fuel filters and water separators. I'm not gonna go buy one that you bolt into your truck. I'm getting serious about this. Why is this $400? What'll it do? Why do I care? Well, the first thing I'm looking for is to get the dirt and the water out of the diesel fuel. I want a lot of filter capacity, and I want a low pressure drop. So these babies are rated at 250 gallons an hour with one pound of pressure drop. A pair of these will feed each dyno cell. So we've got 500 gallon per hour capacity with very low restriction and a lot of life expectancy. So what sets these guys apart, Parker Raycor, from everybody else? Well, it's all about the media inside this can. And in my estimation, it would be hard to beat the technology that's inside this thing. Back around 2007, they wanted to put DPFs in all the diesel vehicles. I know you guys love those. And of course, the DPF being a diesel particulate filter. They don't like sulfur. So we had to get the sulfur out of the fuel. And to do that, the, the industry went to what's called hydro treating the fuel. When you hydro treat the fuel, you get the sulfur out, but you also take out lubrication quality of the fuel. To add lubricity back into the fuel, the chemicals that they use, known as surfactants, have an ugly side effect. Surfactants are agents that allow liquids that don't want to combine with each other to combine with each other in the form of an emulsion. So the dirty little secret here is these new lubrication additives allow water in very small particles to be blended in with the fuel again. New filtration had to happen. And these guys at Parker Raycor really went through an exercise because the way you tested filters prior to this change in fuel didn't apply anymore. So they had to come up with a new test mechanism, new test series to test all the new filter media that they were doing. The key element to all of this is, if you want to get out all this stuff, all the way down to 10 micron size, and you want to get out the water, you've got to get real clever with the media that's inside this can. Especially if you want a flow rate to be decent. So the key element here is, Lots of surface area. And on that note, here's Christine Stanfall, Chief Engineer of Global Filtration Media at Parker Raycor. 
Raycor's media development programs are really quite diverse. We have programs right now that are advancing our knowledge and understanding of the chemicals, treatments that are needed to give specific chemical rea reactivity to the surfaces of media. And this is important for fuel filtration where you're trying to separate fuel and water. So whereas in the past we had particle fibers that were on the order of a micron, we're now pushing down to the micro and now into the nanofiber region. But as the filter dimensions are, are decreased, the demands for the filter paper are getting more, more extreme. And so we have therefore moved to composite type media where if you see here, you have a, a structural support layer that is giving both structural support and fine particle filtration that is composited with melt-blown synthetic layers, and in this case, this is a four-layer media, where each of these layers we have designed specifically to marry with one another in order to hold dramatically higher amounts of dirt compared to just the base paper alone. Essentially, anything on Earth can be separated if you have enough surface area. We want to put and, and I'm not exaggerating, hundreds of square meters of surface area between the upstream side of the filter, the dirty wet side of the filter, and the downstream side where you need clean dry fuel. And coalescence media that we have developed have thousands of square meters of surface area available per, per square inch of media for that purpose. Did you hear that? That's just mind blowing. That's so much filter area per square inch of filter media. It's, Jesus. Let's talk about the media and the filtration capability. She started talking nanometers. Well, what's a micron? What's a nanometer? A micron is one one thousandth of a millimeter. And a millimeter is nominally 39 thousandths of an inch. So one one thousandth of 39 thousandths ain't much. That's one micron. A nanometer is one one thousandth of a micron. A nanometer is how much your fingernails grow in one second. Oh, you should just see that happening. <laughs> what we're talking about is exactly what I want for my primary fuel filtration out in the fuel shed. This goes on the vacuum side. So it'll come out of the fuel tank. We pump up into a gravity feed holding tank with an air motor so we don't have any chance of sparks out in the fuel shed. And we gravity feed from that tank now through a pair of these to each dyno cell. And we're collecting any water right here that may be in the fuel. I don't expect a hell of a lot. And if we get some, we just drain it right here. So once we install these, I don't think we're going to have any issues with the fuel being contaminated. I think I'm going to be getting clean, dry fuel coming out of the exit port on this baby. That will protect our fuel measuring equipment, our lift pump equipment, all the way to our final filtration prior to the engine itself, which will be in the five to seven micron range. I think that'll work well for both our Bosch and our Denso high pressure pumps and injectors. Of course, we'll be measuring and logging the pressure drops through or pressure gains all the way through the system. We don't want any of the fuel supply system to imprint itself on our power or fuel efficiency. So that all goes into the iDash data monster for analysis. So this will all be in operation for our next episode of Killing a Duramax.